Hey, Skelling Bones, glad you're here. I've actually got some big news. Yes, we know. You moved to California. No one cares. That was harsh. Uh, what are you doing over there? I'm packing. As dumb as you are, your big life change has uh, inspired me to make one of my own. Oh yeah? What's that? Taking the Reaper exam. Can't stay around here as a lowly Shinigami torturing you forever, can I? Time to apply for the big job. You mean the Grim Reaper? Look, I would love to sit around and explain it to you, but I'm late for my interdimensional portal. I left the movie for you to review. Uh, don't even think about skipping it in my absence. What? Cinderella? I don't even like the original Cinderella that much. This is cruel, Skelling Bones. Yeah, sucks to suck. Toodles! <laughs> So in we go to another Good Times classic. If you haven't heard me rant, by the way, about Good Times, I've got a Little Mermaid review and an Aladdin review, both of which you should really check out and learn more about this wonderful company. But for now, we are talking about the Good Times Cinderella and what an opening song it has. Dream. These are the notions that every young girl should be taught. Dream on until the day a prince comes to sweep you off your feet. Man, that is a tough opening number right there. But if good times tradition has taught me anything, there is always only one original song at the beginning of the movie and then a whole bunch of royalty free music sprinkled in for the duration. So I expect this to follow suit. We kick off the story with some simple narration about Cinderella's father. There once lived a gentleman from a fine family whose hard work made him very, very rich. Whose life had made him very rich and also had given him these crazy eyes. The narration continues. Not only was he blessed with a loyal and loving wife, but a most attractive daughter. Okay, no, wait, wait, no. Okay, just stop. That's how the daughter is described? Attractive? No. I have sadly seen a lot of Good Times movies, but this is just too weird. A most attractive daughter? Paired with this look? Okay, okay, so we are off on the wrong foot, but this thing can still be saved, so let's move forward. We hear the ins and outs of Cinderella's circumstance, her mother dying, and her father later getting married to a new woman, who looks not unlike an actual witch. I should, though, take this moment to tell you guys that Lady Tremaine from the original Cinderella Disney movie is my most feared and nightmare inducing villain of all of the Disney movies. I was terrified of her as a kid and still to this day she's the most haunting villain I can think of. You know, subjective of course, but... <laughs> but back to our Cinderella. The stepmother arrives and in tow are her two evil stepdaughters who don't look evil at all and would never do any weird mouth gestures. <laughs> and thusly, Cinderella is left with the stepmother and the stepsisters forced to wear old ratty clothes and do all the chores, all the classic Cinderella stuff, until, as the story goes, she is visited by her fairy godmother who promises to help her out and give the evil trio their comeuppance, which, if you ask me, is well-deserved based on stuff like this. Aw, too bad Sudorola can't play with us. Somebody has to do all the chores. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny! Meanwhile, we venture over to the castle to meet the prince, who is every bit the charming and wonderful character we would hope for. Wealth isn't important to me. 
So we learn they are going to put on a grand ball to assist in finding the prince a bride, and the stepmother has got her invite, though she disallows Cinderella to attend. And come the night of the ball, Cinderella does her best to help her sisters get ready for the event. It's the chance of a lifetime, a chance to begin anew, a chance to capture the heart of Prince and make your dreams come true. Oh, wow, they're actually doing a musical number in the movie, but who's supposed to be singing right now? It kind of sounds like the voices of the sisters, but it's more of just some kind of omniscient narrator. I guess the characters don't actually sing in the movie. The pretty young ladies are ready to dance, but no one will give Cinderella a chance. It's hard to make heads or tails of this song, really, but towards the end, Cinderella actually does some in-world singing, but also leads to one of the most awkward song endings of all time. I missed my chance of a lifetime, I missed my chance for romance. All my dreams have turned to dust, I never had a chance. Everything ready? Wait, is that actually the end of the song? So the evil stepmother promises to let Cinderella go to the ball if she can pick some lentils out of a pile of ashes in the fireplace. Pretty dick move, but hey, it's progress. And with the help of her fairy godmother, quick work is made of the task. But the stepmother sneakily puts one lentil back into the fireplace, forbidding Cindy from going to the ball because she's forgotten that one lentil. Pretty sneaky steps. Like, Cinderella couldn't just walk over and pick that lentil out and then the task is completed. No, we can't get into the logistics. Okay, so stranded at home and drowned in sadness, Cinderella's fairy godmother appears and uses her fairy magic to create a magical carriage and a magical dress for Cinderella to wear out to the ball. And with these wonderful improvements, she is off to the dance looking like a million bucks. One last thing. You must not remain at the ball beyond midnight. Why not? If you stay a moment longer, the charm will be broken and everything will change back to its old self. Except for the glass slippers. Those will remain magical glass slippers for some unknown reason. So, off to the ball we go. And as we expect, Cinderella makes a splash and is the most beautiful girl in attendance. I mean, people are floored by her. <sighs> huh? <gasps> oh, man. Wait, who the heck is this guy? Okay, okay, we're getting off track. The ball continues on, and we are all expected to play the Cinderella Clark Kent game, as I call it, where we have to accept that no one can recognize her just because she has different clothes on. This is a time-honored tradition, and sure, all buy in. The prince and Cinderella spend the evening together, and though brief their exchange may be, they feel the seeds of love beginning to grow but the stepmother holds out hope for her daughters. He'll soon tire of her, you'll see. I don't know, evil stepmother. Will he tire of her? There's really no way to know. But the prince did not tire of Cinderella. He danced only with her for the rest of the evening. Uh, okay, thanks, mid-film narrator. But as we all know, their night is cut short when the clock strikes midnight. Cinderella bolts out of the party, managing to escape before her charade is exposed, with the only trace of her left behind being a single glass slipper, which I still maintain should revert to a normal shoe. Shh, 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 there's another song starting. Where has she been all my life? I'm drawn like a moth to her flame. Where could she be? Without her, I won't be the same. Without I've never felt this way before. A floating in a sea of moonbeams. 
Man, this song is long. Like, for real. It's literally three of the 45 minutes of the movie. But you know what? I'm gonna give Good Times its due props. Three original songs, albeit not amazing songs, but kudos to Good Times for putting original songs into their movies. Keep at it. Oh, Good Times isn't a thing anymore? Okay. Rest in peace. <laughs> okay, okay. Now let's see if the prince can find his beloved. The search for the beauty from the ball begins. That it hereby be known that the royal prince requests all single ladies, single ladies, all single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, now put your hands I actually spent time editing that. So with a glass slipper in hand, the prince will not stop until he finds the owner of the shoe. And though it is wildly likely that many women, in fact, have the same size feet as Cinderella, we all know how it goes. Failure after failure after... Wait, wait what the f***? After failure until she starts singing through the chimney. I've never felt this way before. Louder! Afloat in a sea of moonbeams. Could this be love? But in the end, the slipper fit, they were soon wed, and lived happily ever after. <laughs> okay, I added that last part. So there we have it, another strange and unforgettable knockoff in the books. And remember, if you guys have suggestions for weird copycat or knockoff movies, feel free to send them to me over at Lootoons on Twitter. I always am checking those, and so apparently is Skelling Bones. Oh, speak of the devil, <laughs> Skelling Bones is texting me. This guy is out of his mind. He thinks he's actually going to become the Grim Reaper. 